everyone, welcome back to my next video. Well, it looks like just another video, doesn't it? Bob standing in front of the ambulance, but it isn't. There's actually a pretty big announcement today. I have a new toy. I do love toys, I'll have to admit it. I don't really uh, show you my lust for new toys uh, on, on video, but I have them just like a lot of people do. And if we'll walk right over here, we'll see my new toy. So follow me over here. And as you can see, I am now the proud owner of a Yamaha uh, Utility Terrain Vehicle, UTV, the most commonly known as side-by-sides. And so um, this is a very odd purchase for me. If you've been listening to my channel for any length of time, you know that I am not a person who has good positive thoughts and feelings about ATVs and UTVs. Uh, in fact, uh, just the opposite. <laughs> I, I have, uh, I have, pretty negative opinions uh, of ATVs and UTVs, and I'm, I'm sorry that I have to say that. There are many of you that love them out there and that have them, and now I own one. And, um, but it's not, it's not the machine. The machine isn't evil, good or evil. It's just a tool, it's just a machine. It's the person behind the wheel or the handlebar. There's just something that happens to a lot of people that when they get in these things, they forget there's anyone else in the world but them. And um, I, I intend to never be that person. If I'm driving around you or your camp, I'm gonna slow down, I'm not gonna dust you out. Uh, I never have understood the, the craving need for speed. You know, this thing will only go, it'll go 40, I guess. I've never gone over 33 on it so far. Probably never will, and that's too fast. Uh, I don't have any need for speed. I've got plenty of time, all the time in the world, I'll slow down. Don't even have a radio in it. I'm not going to drive past you with my radio blasting everybody in the world. The world doesn't have to stop and look at me all the time, although it's kind of okay. Sometimes I don't want it to be while I'm in this thing. So I am now the proud owner of a UTV. Uh, and with my mixed feelings about these things and the owners of these things, you would think that's very odd. And here I'm the preacher of minimalism and having, having uh, the least. Well, one thing I've said all along is that we don't come out here, uh, or, I, or I didn't, and I don't teach coming out here and making your life miserable. That, that isn't my purpose. I, I live in the ambulance because it's bigger and I can stand up and um, it has four wheel drive. Those are the things I wanted in the vehicle. I, had, I wanted more room and space because I want to be comfortable out here. And I'm not suggesting to any of you ever that you come out here and be miserable. And what each of us needs to be comfortable is always different. Some people can be comfortable in nothing but a car or, uh, or an SUV, and I can't, and I know I can't. So I've got a fridge in there, I've got a microwave. That's what I need to be comfortable. And whatever you need, if you need an RV and, and, a, and the kitchen, the full kitchen and the furnace and the sink and the toilet and the shower, then get that. Come out here and be comfortable. Make your life better. These should be the best times of your life. And so uh, for me, I realized what I needed at this point in my life for the very first time, I needed a, a UTV, a side-by-side. -side. I am a person who craves to be alone in nature. Not just in nature surrounded by a million of other people, but in nature where I am going deep into the back country uh, and as far away as I can get and in the most pristine nature. It used to be I did that by walking. I've always been a hiker and a backpacker all my life. I grew up in the 60s. I was, in 1961, my family moved to Alaska. So uh, one of the things that uh, started the backpacking explosion in the 60s and 70s was a man named Colin Fletcher. He, in uh, 1965, he wrote a book called a thousand mile summer, detailing his summer of hiking a thousand miles through the desert and the Sierras in California. Uh, he was a modern day John Muir and he caught the imagination of the American public. And then in 1967, he wrote a book called A Man Who Walked Through Time. He, he hiked the entire length of the Colorado, of the uh, Grand Canyon uh, in, in Northern Arizona around through the Grand Canyon, which, is, which was possible then, it's no longer possible. And then in 1968, he wrote a book called The Complete Walker, which was uh, 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 the Bible then, and remains the Bible now, of how to go walk, how to just do a walkabout, as the Australians say. 
if you want to just take off and go, and today that is an explosion um, of people who are doing the Appalachian Trail or the Pacific Crest Trail or the Complete Walker. The idea of this is I'm going to put everything I own on my back and go. And so these books came out when I was just a young man, and my friends and I all all grabbed onto that idea. And, and we, I lived in Alaska. I lived in Alaska my whole life. Uh, and there was a book out then called 55 Ways to the Wilderness in Southeast Alaska. And we, it was our intention to hike all 55 of those hikes. And we hiked a whole bunch of them. And we just hiked and backpacked. And uh, for that, I bought a camera. And I fell in profoundly, deeply in love with nature photography. And it became, uh, it just became a part of my life to be, uh, to be, have a camera in my hand and out in a beautiful spot. I can say without any question, the happiest moments of my life have always been out in nature, somewhere that was a difficulty to get to or be in, taking photos. That's, that's my happy place. So through my uh, young adulthood, I, I was out hiking and backpacking. I bought a motorcycle and we traveled all over the, motors, all over the country on a motorcycle, uh, not just Alaska. We, we rode them all the way down to the States and, and drove all over uh, the lower 48 and then we went back. Being out and in nature has been my whole life. And then I grew up and became an adult. I decided I had to follow the American dream. I got married, I had kids, I got a job, a, a career, and all of that went on the wayside. Just became no longer a part of my life. Uh, we would still do some, you know, all you can with the family when you have a, uh, we had three kids. And so, you know, we would go out camping and hiking whenever we could. I loved gold prospecting. So I even actually bought uh, rights to a claim and we would go out whenever we could. And that wasn't very much. And it was a big production to get your three kids out there, get the camp set up, uh, go do some gold mining and panning, break the camp down and then drive home. That part of me just atrophied and died basically, and for most of my adult life. Uh, and then in, 19, in 1995, as I've said many times, I went through the divorce and I couldn't, couldn't afford an apartment and I moved into the van. And then uh, for the first time in my life, I was happy. Way, since my youth, since my young adulthood, when I was doing all those things, uh, I was, and I, I thought often about why was I happy for the first time Part of it was a spiritual path that I started following, but a lot of it was being in that van and the connection to nature you have when you're in a van. And I had still I had my two kids then, uh, and so they were still young and at home with their mom. And whenever they came to me every weekend, we were out. Because what? where am I going to put two kids in a van? So we were out. We were out in parks. We were out hiking. Uh, they, you know, they grew up uh, outdoors as much as I could, as much as we could. And so... I became happy again because I was reconnected to nature. And all these years later, uh, you're here watching this, my ramblings. And the reason is because you, for many of you, it's finances, but for many of you, it's not. And even those of you who are here because of finances, you come here because it's maybe the only way you know how to go forward and live. But when you get here, with completely unbeknownst to you, you reconnect with nature. You're in your vehicle, whatever your vehicle is. And sometimes you're cold and sometimes you're hot, but you're out in it all the time. And you see the moon and you follow the phases of the moon and you know when the sun rises and the sun sets. And you know, you see the birds all around you and the animals all around you and you hear the coyotes howling and you come to life again when you are connected to nature. I just have to be out here, and I need to be out here and alone. And the last four years of my life, as I, my mom was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, and then I, she was slowly dying, and this last summer she died. The summer, she died in the summer of 21. My whole life has been devoted to her, uh, taking care of her in the last four years of her life, with my sister who did nearly all the work. Thank you, Brenda. Uh, but I did all I could while I was also birthing the last four years Homes on Wheels Alliance. Alliance. Uh, Sue Ann Carlson and I co-founded it, and we've spent our, the last four years, just every moment of our lives have been devoted to Hawa. And of course, I had to split between the, getting Hawa going and running a channel. I grew a channel in the last four, uh, four years. My entire life has been devoted to my mother 
and to my my work. And there has been little to no time uh, for little time in the back country. And my love of nature and nature photography uh, that has just gone by the wayside. It had to be put on hold, and that's I don't I'm not begrudging that. But I mean, it's the last four years of my life, uh, from 62 to 66, are gone. I'm not getting them back. And also in those four years, my knees have, uh, I'm 66 now, and things are, things are falling apart. So the, all that to say, I'm not walking into the backcountry anymore. That's just not a part of my life. It's not ever going to be a part of my life again. But I have to have this. Uh, I have to be out in the backcountry. And so that's where the UTV comes in. It will get me there. I, I had to have one. Now, I, I already can hear a lot of you. I can hear, I, I hear you typing out there. I hear your thoughts. <laughs> I must have more empathy in me than I realize because I can hear what you're thinking and feeling. The rotten bum, I told you so. He's doing it all for the money. He doesn't care about anyone else but himself and getting the money. I started out with one goal to help people. I have one goal and to help people. And along the way, uh, YouTube threw money at me. And I've said this before, and I'll keep saying it. What am I going to do with it? They, they threw money at me. And was I going to burn it and say, no, I'm too pure to take this money and, and enjoy life with it? Uh, well, I've devoted every moment of the last four years to you and to the channel and to my mother. And now I'm going to take some for myself. It's just that simple. Uh, and so part of that is this, because what to me, a good life, a complete life, is in nature. And for me... And not, no, I'm sure not necessarily for you, but for me, it means it's being as far back and as the most beautiful possible place I can be and uh, with as few people around as possible. So this is going to change my life. Uh, back about money, one more time. One more thing. The money for this came from the movie Nomadland. I went into Nomadland with no other goal than uh, to uh, touch more lives and let more people know that they could live a good life, to let more people about know about it, and, uh, and I think I accomplished that goal. And there was never a moment's discussion of money uh, between me and the producers of Nomad Land. So the money came, for, the money for this and the ambulance came from the movie. And, um, and the movie came about because of a hard, well, uh, decades of hard work and dedication to getting the message out of a better way of living. So let's take all of that to say, I own a UTV. I will not be turned into an asshole any more of an asshole than I already am. Uh, and there are a lot of assholes behind wheels of UTVs. And um, I promise you, I will. it will not. There's nothing magical about this that's going to turn me into an asshole. And if you own a UTV and you're not an asshole, I am not saying you are. I've known a lot of great people in ATVs and UTVs. I mean, wonderful people. Uh, one of my one of the favorite people in the whole world uh, loved ATVs, and uh, he just passed. And I was so so sad about that. We just had a memorial for him. And, uh, and every time I think about him, I think about his ATV. But even he would say, yeah, there's a whole bunch of assholes out here on ATVs. All right, let's take a quick look around. You don't really care, I'm sure, most of you. And we'll look around at the UTV. So this side-by-side -side is made by Yamaha. I've made the decision I either wanted a Honda or a Yamaha. I'm just sold on the Japanese uh, motor products. Uh, they make great cars, they make great pianos, they make great everything. Whatever Honda and Yamaha makes is great, and I wanted one. And so it's a three-seater. Uh, each seat has its own uh, seat belt. Cody is kind of terrified by the ATV, and so he's going to sit in the middle right tight beside me because he needs that. And you can see there's a grab bar for both uh, the passengers. I did put in, I spent the extra money, and I got a windshield. Uh, the Yamaha comes with a, uh, a roof, and that's unusual. Many don't. Most don't. Side by sides. This one, uh, Yamaha gives it automatically. I wanted it to be street legal, and so I put in um, a windshield. And you have to have mirrors on both sides to be uh, street legal. And I also had them put on uh, turn signals. So that's the turn front turn signal. And of course, they have all this huge clearance, four-wheel drive. One of the reasons I liked the Yamaha in particular was it came with a uh, four-wheel lock mode. All four wheels lock and spin at once, and that's going to get you out of a lot of really bad places. Another thing I really liked about the Yamaha was that it has uh, a lot of braking, a huge amount of braking, and that was really important to me as well. 
And of course, like uh, this is a UTV, it's a utility terrain vehicle. It's designed to do work. So it has a drop down big box in back. The Yamaha comes with this nice uh, mat. And I really, really liked, appreciated the mat. And uh, it's a great big box. I can carry all the camping gear I want. I'm planning to camping and backpacking out of it. Get me into the back country with that and then do trails uh, from camp. And then it has a box and of course uh, it's a dump and they all are. That's, they're not unique or special about that. They're all kind of dumps. But uh, that's very handy. Uh, if I get to go out and collect firewood where that's legal, it's got a great big, the engine's in back right over the rear wheels. It's got a great big 700 sing C uh, single cylinder engine. And uh, I wanted to be fully enclosed so there was, Cody wouldn't jump out. He wouldn't see a rabbit or get scared or whatever. So that's my new toy. Uh, as you, and I, of course, had to buy a trailer that I'll have to trailer it everywhere. The, the 6.6 .6 diesel in my, um, my ambulance will just tow this thing like it's not there, like it doesn't exist up and down any hill. So I'm really delighted. That's one of the reasons I went ahead and got the diesel is because I knew this was coming. Um, and so uh, as part of the package, uh, I hope you understand and you will forgive me and allow me that uh, this is uh, my old age and uh, I figure I've got 10 good healthy years where I can be out and man, I want to make use of them. Now, I, I want to reassure you that till the day I die, I'm going to be making and shooting videos uh, for the channel. I'm uploading them and you'll be seeing me. I'm not going anywhere. I'm hoping to phase out, do less, enjoy my life more to the day I die, hopefully on my deathbed. I'll be making a video of me dying saying, I hope this goes viral. <laughs> I really do. That's my goal. So make a viral video when I go, when I die. <laughs> and I won't be there to enjoy it, but the thought of it on my last breath, well, I think I'll still enjoy it. I hope I'll enjoy it uh, at any rate. So this is my new toy. You'll be seeing a lot of it. You'll be seeing a lot of it and I in the back country in beautiful, beautiful places. I know a lot, a lot of you will never get to those places. I want to bring them to you. I think that's part of one of my Parts of my calling is to bring those beautiful places to you, even if you can't get to them. So I want to hear from you. <laughs> Be nice. If you're not nice, we'll, we'll delete your comment. I mean, tell me if you think I'm wrong and I, I you know, I don't owe myself anything. And there's nothing special about me and I'm just in it for the money. If you need to tell me that, then you can tell me that as long as you tell me nicely and not insulting uh, because that's just I don't want that in my life. I don't want that on my channel. And I, then I don't want you on my channel. So that's, let's not have that. But tell me what you think. Uh, are you in favor? Are you opposed? Are, all, <laughs> are you a UTV driver and you want to give me a piece of your mind? <laughs> not all UTV drivers are, are assholes. I can't say that enough, but boy, a whole bunch of them are. I can say that with absolute certainty. If you got anything out of this video, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button. Let me know what you think and I'll talk to you later. Bye now.